Pugh. Pugh, that'll do it. That will do it. Pugh for Bournemouth. The roof of the gold sands is raised. Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football. Well, good evening, Bournemouth fans. Hope you're all doing okay, and welcome to this midweek special on Back of the Net, where I'm joined by the team to go over a number of talking points in football, not least AFC Bournemouth's trip to the Den tomorrow to face Millwall in a crunch encounter. What would be about 40, 45 minutes tonight, and there's lots to discuss with Mr. Tix. Tix, how are you? I'm good, Sam. How are you? Very good. I feel like I'm about to sneeze, but I don't know if it's going to happen. That's going to be exciting. That's yeah, exciting it might be. Leaving yeah. people, I'm just, I'm just planting that seed there for people to uh, stay on. Tom Jordan, evening. Evening, Sam. Evening, Tiggs. Hope you're well. All good, mate. And also Jeff Hayward, who, who said he had had the perfect weekend on the pod. So not much of a royalist, Jeff. I'm guessing, right? Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you! Yeah, all right. Let's just leave it. Let's be provocative, Sam. Jeez. <laughs> What an opening gambit, Sam. Yeah, blimey. No, blimey. No, so, you get me trolled on Twitter or something. In terms of football, though, yeah, it was it was a perfect weekend for AFC Bournemouth. Not the perfect evening results-wise, but we'll go over that. If you're new to the channel, feel free to give us a like and also subscribe as we commentate over our playoff push. And that's where it's likely to be now after Watford got a result at Carrow Road tonight, just like we did at the weekend. So we can't not talk about the main talking point at the moment and that's the Super League and it looks like Chelsea and also Man City I'm sure there'll be others to follow they're looking to backtrack on their initial decision and this joining this whole Super League it's creating a domino effect and the reaction from fans in person outside grounds and on social media it has been cacophonous I've got to say as has the media commentary from the likes of Jamie Carragher, Rio Ferdinand, Gary Neville, Gary Lineker it cannot be underestimated and as Nev said himself it was a criminal act and tell you what guys what have you thought about this last like 48 hours in football or more. It's been absolutely mad, hasn't it, Tom? Yeah, it has been crazy. Um, it's, it seems like it's gone parallel with with the world we've had in the last year, doesn't it, with um, all the, the pandemic and things like that. But, yeah, just just madness. I suppose when you look at it now, you think it was inevitable. When when you when you think about it and you think of these owners and they don't, you know, you, you look at like Roman Bramovich, probably don't even know who Gianfranco Zola is. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just don't, these people don't, they're not. They don't care about the fans. You sit when there's a Champions League final or something. It's like a ninety thousand capacity uh, stadium. There's about fifteen thousand for the fans mm. because they just all go corporate and things like that. Um, I remember the Europa League was. I can't remember it was a couple of years ago. Two London teams, Chelsea and Arsenal, playing in Baku and Azerbaijan. There's there's mm. no there's no thought of the fans. The fans are a byproduct. But what you saw not long ago with the Chelsea game was that you know. Fans have got a voice and, you know, they, they can be listened to and they're crumbling now. So um, probably be a bit of a domino effect, hopefully, and they'll all pull out. But, yeah, it's, it's going to carry on because we all know the intent was there from from owners of these clubs. And, um, yeah, really sad, really sad, especially when you see not so long ago, teams like Barry no longer with us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it is sad. Um, and I saw a little clip, probably, you've probably all seen it, with Eddie talking on it. As, as well as he always does. And that's what it's about, isn't it? It's the, it's the dream. It's the, can we do it? Can we do the journey? And it's sucking the life out of it. It's a bit bit worrying. Yeah, it's just something that goes completely against sporting integrity. It's been masked as a good thing for football with money apparently trickling down the pyramid system. But we've had those promises before. And like you say, there are clubs that have gone uh, to the wall. The fact is that there would be no pyramid. Well, there would be up to a point, but... Then you've got this league at the top that self-appoint themselves as being top six. Um, absolutely stunk, I've got to say. And it's a cowardly act to have been done in amongst a period of time ticks where there's no fans at the stadium to be able to protest. It's like, now that they're not here, let's try to sneak this one in. But the fans on social media, I mean, the reaction has been huge. And outside the stadiums as well, mate. I mean, Chelsea fans protest, uh, protesting. And they're one of the first clubs to have pulled out, along with Man City. 
Yeah, there's good, you know, big scenes outside of uh, outside of Stanford Bridge today. But what's really interesting, I think, is you talk about their sound about them kind of sneaking it through. Do you know what? I think the vanity of these owners is such that they've bought a football club. Yeah, you know, they should be able to do what they wish with it. And looking at the like an American sports system, that franchise system, that's how they make their money, isn't it? They they trap all the big clubs together, and they don't allow anyone new to the party that might spoil spoil that freedom that they've created for themselves. So um, it is really interesting to us. It seems like an astonishingly poor idea, but I suppose to those owners, those those billionaires, they're like, "Well, this is my thing. I want to make more money out of this, and you you allowed me to buy it." Why can't I do what I want with it? It's a real interesting thing that's going on in football now. Maybe we're starting to reap what we sow a little bit, selling our football clubs over time to different owners. I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe. I mean, as the Premier League, look, this week they're aiming to enhance their no room for racism message as well. So mm. how absent-minded and ridiculous and selfish in terms of the timing was it to be putting this news out of this breakaway? And... These faceless owners that never speak, uh, deciding what the clubs of the customers, sorry, the customers of the clubs want on their behalf, which you know, spurs aside are trading on their historical success where they weren't even there in the first place. I thought uh, it's disgusting. And Jeff, it, it looks like sense is prevailing. But in terms of AFC Bournemouth, a lot of people have been asking us, how, how would it even affect us if these top six clubs in the Premier League went off? How, how would it directly affect us? Well, um, I think there'd be less money in the game. I think the, the TV companies would um, view what they're currently paying uh, for rights to, to show Premier League games. I mean, if we get back to the Premier League, I think that would that would be drastically cut. Um, and I think that would have an effect on all the sides. I think, no, the, the most, the, the, the biggest effect would be, I mean, we wouldn't get it to be Chelsea anymore, you know? <laughs> yeah, very yeah. That, true. That would be massive. Um, and I think the, the baffling thing for me is that Arsenal want to be in a league where they're going to finish bottom of the table every season. Why would they do that? You know, I know Tottenham wanted to be in it as well, Jeff. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's that's that's madness, isn't it? You've got you know, Tottenham and Arsenal in particular. You just think you're nowhere near the you're not even what are you talking about? What what right if they feel like they've got its divine right to be in the in, in the elite league and in the Champions League and things like that? And you think they're worried that they put all this money into football club, but there's jeopardy in there in football. There's jeopardy. If you yeah. don't perform, you might not get in it. They don't want that jeopardy anymore. They think we got the money, so we want to be in it and we can't not be in it, um, which is ridiculous and abs absolutely madness. Like I say, Tottenham have, Arsenal have been a an embarrassment every time they've been in Europe for, yeah. for England, really. Um, Tottenham, I mean, it's absolutely crazy that they, they could even consider this. I don't understand it at all. Um, I mean, not even my lifetime. I don't even think my dad's ever seen Tottenham win a league. Um, you know, it's I think it was six to early sixties. I think they last won won the league. But um, yeah, it's it's crazy. And then you've got I think the sad thing is I mean, Man City and Chelsea. It's kind of it feels like a bit new money, doesn't it? You know, because they kind of come around more recently. Liverpool, Man U. That 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 hurt me in the sense that they're. They, you know what they're all about. You know what their fans are about, and things like that. And Gary Neville was was saying that really well, wasn't he? And that that is, I think that's really hurt them too as well because of their their values and their beliefs and things like that. Very very working men's football clubs and things like that. So that's it is sad. But then I think you know we we saw you know even with Sky and like the, when we were in the pandemic, they were trying to charge us fifteen quid to watch a game. Yeah. It's all over the place, isn't it? It's um it's not just one person. It's all these people at the top that are um it's just it is just all money. It's power power and it's it's difficult to get away from it really is and when you have a pandemic that these big owners have lost a hell of a lot of money and they'll do anything to try and win it back and um that's obviously what they thought they would be able to do but looks like the voice of the fans has spoken looks like it's crumbling that's the main thing yeah it does and it's a good thing tigs i've got to say and yeah like Tom said, it's always nice to go to certain clubs and beat them. You know, Man United as well. I think we've beat all of them apart from, from Manchester City. And, uh, you know, I can't believe how vocal it was, uh, I've certainly got to say. But, you know, the reaction has caused teams to backtrack. And it was one of these things, I think, Tiggs, that there was always going to be a tipping point with it. Because if a single broadcaster didn't completely you know refute it like sky sports came out yesterday on monday night football and said we're not interested in uh in it we haven't had discussions i think amazon and bt have done the same even yeah. even um 
DAZN as well did exactly the same, which I thought maybe someone like them would come in. So maybe they would have had to form their own product. But it's one of those things when one person is interested, then there are various advertisers who spark an interest and there would come a time where fans would get swayed and it it would happen and there's no going back. So it's so good. People think there was a bit of an overreaction. It wasn't because had it reached like anywhere near that, you know, tipping point, it could have it could have happened. Yeah, it really could have. So it was it was good that there was a a solid reaction from pretty much every corner of the media over this. Um, it, I, the cynic in me would say that some of those owners of football clubs knew that this probably would happen, mm. and maybe this is more a game of kind of strengthening their hand in negotiating what they really want in terms of Champions League and how the money is distributed there. Potentially, I don't know. Let's hope not. Um, because otherwise, the other th problem is, is this actually going to, going to go away? Because we've been having rumblings of this for, well, Jeff and I were talking about it the other, the other day. I mean, every year it feels like there is a, another rumour about a European Super League or about, you know, some kind of touring league with games in America and, and things mm. like that. So it just doesn't feel like, to me, those top six clubs, they feel like they deserve more money than the rest of us because of their brand. And, uh, you know, their, their brand shouldn't be sold through pushing other people down, really, should it? No, I mean, Jeff, the Premier League has been very fair. It's a meritocracy. So if you finish top, you do get the most money. And, of course, if you're actually live on Sky, you get a fee for that as well. So, you know, the biggest teams, uh, teams do prosper. But even if you finish like 15th, 14th, whatever, you're getting over 100 million. So it is distributed as fairly as it, as it you know, you know as it possibly can be but obviously if these six clubs have gone the premier league would be a product which is not as valuable therefore sky wouldn't want to pay as much therefore yeah. all the rest of the 14 teams would be affected their wages would have to be cut people would have to be made redundant and that doesn't just stretch to the premier league it would be down to the championship i'm sure there's a certain level of football where it may not actually be affected but at some point going up probably the championship that's where it would have an effect. So, you know, we can count our lucky stars and we'll have a Premier League that we can all, you know, be fond of watching match of the day. We can. And um, I think I think it's uh, the arrogance of these clubs that think that they're better than the rest um, and, and that they deserve more money. I mean, it, it's clearly prompt, prompted by greed. You know, I agree with Tom, you know, they have put a lot of money into it, these owners, but still... They're making they're making a fortune. They are making a flipping fortune as well. We shouldn't lose sight of that already. How do we think that Manchester City can buy Nathan Ake for forty odd million? Yeah, it's because they're loaded, and and their their owners aren't short of a bob or two. Why they need more? You know, it's 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 all about protecting their interests. And frankly, football is a game of ebb and flow. Sometimes you get a Leicester City that does an amazing thing, and that's why we love the game. You know that they they can win the Premier League. We all dream about us getting into Europe. Crikey, I know West Ham fans. They can't believe that they're going to make Champions League this year. Yeah. You know, mm. and, and good luck to them. That's what football's all about. We we want to have those same same dreams and aspirations. I thought a certain Eddie Howe hit the nail on the head when he was talking. You know, absolutely spot on. You know, every player wants to dream of success. Yeah. That's what is that's what being a being a fan is all about. Mm. And if they if they were to go at the end of the season, our promotion would have, I don't know, like would there have been six teams going up or not? You know, I just don't know how it would work. I mean, it would have been quite funny if they, they put six teams up and Reading still missed out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, that, that, would have, that would have been a part of me that would have liked that. But no, it's like you say, it, is, like I say, it looks like it's crumbling, but um don't know if you've seen Sam. There's a few things we said just before we come on, didn't we? Woodward, Edward Wood looks like he's, well, he apparently has resigned. Um, at Manchester United, and now I've just seen that Agnelli, is that how you pronounce it, um, has resigned from his role as president of Juventus, and reports coming out that the Glazer family are considering selling Manchester United. So this is going to this is going to go on for a long time. The repercussions of all this, and um, yeah, really interesting. I know that Agnelli was quite vocal, so yeah, but it's it's crazy to try and get your head around it all at the moment. Things are happening all the time, aren't they? But um, we will yeah, move on to talk about 
we will move on to talk about Bournemouth. But Jeff, do you think the damage is, there's been damage done already with relations between owners and fans? Because yeah. there's been so much outroar. I've not seen outroar. Uh, um, you know, outrage where the royal family has commented. Like Boris Johnson has like seized his opportunity to become popular by commenting on on as well. Um, so many people are speaking out about this. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's quite staggering, and I, I think. Uh, Whoever whoever was behind this whole concept didn't do their homework. If they thought that they had lots of people with them who would come out and and say, you know, great idea, let's go for it. You know, they were they were sorely disappointed. I've never seen such a unanimous front against such a crazy idea. So um, it'll be buried. And interesting that some of the key movers and shakers are leaving their posts because that makes you think, well maybe it will be dead and buried. You know, there was a lot of talk about this being a negotiating tactic and it will come back. But actually, if Woodward and Anelia are going, they're the two prime movers from what I understood, from, from what I read. And if they've gone, um, it might be some time before it resurfaces, I'd say. Uh, but it just shows that their loyalty to the club is nothing anyway. You know, like if they're resigning just because they're chucking their uh, toys out of the pram, just shows you how how really committed you know they are to the club anyway. They're just... Yeah, they got. Yeah, think, you know, I think we might underestimate as well the power of FIFA, UEFA, and all those connections that they've got. You know, we all remember how Russia got to win the uh, World Cup a few years ago. You know, they've got lots of connections. Lots of people probably got um, got calls to say, "I think it would be the right thing for you to do to resign." Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, we're not getting promoted via that route, Tom, but we're also probably not going to get promoted automatically as well. I mean, look, not many of us expected it, but you can see the result there tonight. Carrow Road, Norwich nil, Watford won. And lo and behold, who the hell was it that scored, Tom? I think it might have been a certain Dan Goslin. Um, really good for me. Is it, look, it made me look good. I went on a, um, a Watford um, podcast with uh, Jacob, who we've oh, had yeah, on. WD18, on yeah, yeah WD18. Just talked about Goslin when they signed him because they wanted to know, didn't really know, you know too much about him. And a good, good little quote the service that I said, he will score big goals. He will score big goals. And I thought, he hasn't really done that for him yet. Mm. He scored a, a way at top of the league tonight. So, yeah, you know, credit, credit to credit to goals, to be fair. Um, and listen, I, I put a tweet out earlier and, and said about it because we all said that we felt it was a bit weird. That, and I don't think anyone thought it was weird that we let Gosling go because we've got a lot of players in that position. And obviously, we wanted to sign Ben Pierce as well. So that might have had something to do with it. I think it was just weird that we let him go to a direct rival mid-season. That was my point. Was that what's the point of signing contracts if you're just gonna if as soon as they want to leave you just let them go to ever? I, I just would have thought a club trying to get promotion and try and be a big hitter in the league would have said, "Look, Goz, your contract to the end of the season. If you want to go now, you're welcome to, but we're not strengthening a rival. So you have to sit here and work for your place." Goz did come out and say he was happy to fight for his place, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and I just think we should have been a little bit. Yeah, a little bit stronger about that because whether you get into our team or not, there's a reason why Watford want him. And he's got three points tonight. Um, like I say, I don't think we would have caught him anyway. It was it was nice thinking we uh, it was in reach, but um, yeah, I think it would have been hard anyway. But I didn't expect him to win tonight because before the sending off, Norwich looked pretty good against us. So that was a that was a surprise. I watched most of them. Watford did look good to be fair to them. Um, they've yeah, they've probably seen it a little bit like you know when we played Bolton, it was our chance, wasn't it? Obviously, yeah. we knew, if, and it probably felt a bit like that for Watford. And um, they rose their levels. And listen, as much as we don't like them, they're, they're, they've been the two best teams this this season. They deserve to go up. Let's just hope that we can scrape our way through in the playoffs. And um, it'll be interesting to see how we go now because we've got four games where we're probably going to finish third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. And I don't really think there's much difference. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we get on tomorrow night. It takes Woodgate has really got the best out of players like Cameron Carter Vickers. And also Ben Pearson, and I think uh, Tom or Neil, I can't remember which one, described them as uh, Jonathan Woodgate type players. Yeah. Um, do you think that Dan Gosling could have been a Jonathan Woodgate type player? Yeah, I do. You know, he he's, he works hard. He just he'll run all day for you, won't he? And uh, he. Uh, what I like about what Woodgate's doing is you've got uh, Billing in the ten, but if you now look at Lerma and Pearson, they're both up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, they're not saying you want one more advanced one back all the time. They, they swap positions and that would have been great for Gosling. Also, you know, the attacking intent that he has, you see tonight he scored a goal, typical Dan Gosling goal, arriving late and, and, and putting it away. So, um, yeah, I think he would have. But then again, you know, we signed, we've signed Pearson. 
mm. and we've signed Wiltshire and you make you know you think to yourself well would that have limited his chances it really probably would have to be honest if you know looking at the way Pearson's played mind you then we've had injury from Cook so who knows I mean mm. definitely I think Woodgate would admire him Mm. I wonder yeah. if logically we looked at the the options we had in there and we obviously wanted Wilshire and Pearson and maybe we thought we can't really have them all on the wage bill at the moment. Goslin's one that's maybe and we just and unfortunately for us, Watford were the only team and we decided to, you know, to risk that potentially. And listen, we all know Ben Pearson's been a great signer, so can't argue with that. I think Woodgate, mm. if we talk about Woodgate, I think he would have used Goslin more than Wilshire off the bench, actually. I think he's that type. You see it a lot when he brings on the the fullbacks, for example, and wide positions hanging. I just think he, he rarely brings Wilshire on, you know, when you win the game. I think Goslin would have been one that would have come on a lot more. But um, yeah, no, I am pleased for him though. I, did, well, I think we all wish Gos the best. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be interesting, interesting to see um, if he can get back in the Premier League and playing games because he hasn't like played regularly for Watford, has he? But um, yeah. what he done tonight is exactly what he does. It's what he yeah. does. Yeah, and it's money well spent from them. I'm absolutely certain on wages, etc. Thanks for the super chat. To Harry Mogg, we'll go back to the previous conversation where he says it wouldn't have felt special had we just bought our way into the Prem. Uh, us fans are the most loyal customers. Without us, they fail. Boy Scott, uh, boycott, B Sky B, sorry Sky BT, and all the rest of them. Yeah, easy for yeah. me to say. And Amazon <laughs> and all the rest. Yeah, thanks Harry Mogg. Thanks for supporting the channel. And a super chat guarantees that your chat gets on air. Let us know whereabouts in the world you're watching from tonight. We would love to know. Post your geographical locations and we will get them on screen. So the league table, Jeff, looks like this. There we go. I mean, yeah, it was a pipe dream for automatics. We thought if Watford could do a job tonight, it would mean that they would just have to drop points in one of their next two games for it to go to the final day. But the fact they've got three points for them tonight is massive. We ourselves can get a maximum of 86 points we got of course win all the remaining four games which you know Watford they just need two points to mathematically at this point confirm it so you're looking at the rest of them uh Brentford drew one all with Cardiff tonight and Swansea City they're nil nil at the moment are they Tom yeah still nil nil 64 minutes just out of that yeah and who are they playing uh QPR QPR. Okay, interesting. So, mm. I mean, you look at the table there, Jeff, and it's in our own hands to actually finish third at this point in time. I think we've got a really strong chance of, of finishing above Swansea and Brentford. Swansea uh, seem to have lost their confidence, and I watched uh, part of that Brentford game tonight. I know, I know we're playing them on Saturday, but they, there's there's nothing to be afraid of there. You know, they've got Ivan Tony who's the only one who can score goals from it seems at the moment. They've lost uh, a lot of confidence. It'll be a really interesting game. I mean, it, you know, football is all about ebb and flow, as I said earlier, but I don't think we've got too much to be afraid of going into the playoffs. I, I was just about to say, actually, when you because I, I thought that earlier as well, that if Ivan Tony doesn't, doesn't score or doesn't have a game, Brentford struggle. And don't get me wrong, I love Ivan Tony because his goal scoring record is unbelievable. And you always want a goal scorer. But I remember early parts of the season, we felt a bit reliant on, oh, we need Dom to start scoring because he was our main man. I think what's yeah. good about us at the moment is, compared to, say, Brentford, who are relying on a Tony, I'm looking at it thinking, oh, Brooks can pop up, Dan Juma can pop up, Dom can pop up, Billings popping up. And a lot of the other teams, you look at like Swansea, and I think it always seems to be Ayu, and then Brentford, it always seems to be Tony, even Norwich, who obviously it doesn't matter anymore, but it was always Pookie. And I quite like that about us at the moment. For the first time in the season, I feel like there's goals from everywhere, um, which is which is quite good, because I think, like Jeff said there, I think Brentford are a little bit over-reliant on Tony at the moment, and it's easier for teams to just snuff one player out, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, that's good. And I didn't even mention Stanislas, because he's got a cold in him as well. So, look at that as a positive. And uh, yeah, I, th I think if I, I think most people, especially neutrals, if you had to put money on it, you probably would say Bournemouth are going to finish third. But whether that's a good thing or not, who knows? Mm. I think we should do possibly one of those championship table predictors. Do you think we should do that, Tiggs, Jeff? Yeah. yeah. Why not? It's a little bit of fun. And we can go through and have a look at the fixtures that the rest of the teams have got. Interestingly, Watford... <coughs> 
yeah, they can confirm their promotion. Playing the team that we're playing tomorrow, we'll have a little bit of a preview on that in due course. And we'll also uh, speak to a Millwall fan as well that can provide a little bit of insight on that. OK, so we're going to bring up the championship table predictor now. So here we go. These are the fixtures from this match week. And look, for the sake of argument, what are we going to call the score between Swansea and QPR that's being played now? Are we going to keep it... Well, yeah, I mean, I'd, draw, or should we give Swansea the benefit of the doubt they might actually win it? Well, I'd, I'd be worried that Swansea are going to nick one. I've just looked at the stats. Um, Swansea have had seven goal attempts. QPR have had 15. Mm. Yeah, wow. At Swansea, QPR have had more possession. I mean, I reckon that could end a draw at best. I, yeah, depend, do what you want to do. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Swansea nick it 1-0. But well, maybe, yeah, just, just to be unbiased, do we say Swansea are going to nick it? Yeah, I think let's oh, yeah. be unbiased and go yeah. for uh, a Swansea win. Right? Are we are we like, like now basically saying that any team that is below sixth is probably not in it? So are we going to, for instance, are we going to call the Reading results here, or are we just not going to bother? They're four points below Barnsley at the moment, or maybe we should just do Reading just to confirm the fact they will finish seventh. Maybe we yeah, I think do Reading. I think we'll Reading. Do We're we'll seven do points that. clear of Reading, aren't we? So uh, if we if we win two, mm. then we we got playoffs. It's just where we where we end in the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. So uh, right then, Tiggs, I'll give this one to you. Millwall versus AFC Bournemouth tomorrow. That's a nice easy one for you. Oh, gee, I hated that. Was my least favourite game this season when we played them because mm, uh, that the, for me that was the start of the real slide. Like performances hadn't been fantastic, but what happened from that point on. I just week after week, it just got me lower and lower and lower. Um, so I've I've got to think that we get, we got to do something a bit better um, than we did last time. But that said, I think they're going to make it really really hard. They made it hard for everyone. They're the king makers in my opinion mm. because they're playing a lot of the top six. So um, I'm gonna we're gonna scrape it one 0 I think. Tom, are you are you thinking a win here, Jeff? I mean, I I was saying on the free fall, it, it's all made, it feels like we're playing roulette and it's been kind of red, 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 red for so long. At some mm. point, it's going to go black and we're either going to get a draw or whatever. Or, you know, which could be a good thing for us because it might inspire the team to then push on again. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world if we did get a draw tomorrow, Jeff, would it? It wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, um, Millwall are a really gnarly team, big players. They're going to get behind the ball. They're going to press us. They're going to work really hard. It's going to be horrible to watch, probably. You know, it could end up a nil-nil. They got a draw against Brentford at the weekend. And, you know, like I could see it being a horrible goal to straw, unless there's some magic from, I don't know, one of our players. Who could that be? Yeah, who could that be? OK, we're going to let chat, the chat decide. So we'll let you decide the Bournemouth results, OK? And we want you to be... Kind of don't have your cherry hat on at the moment. Try to be sitting on the fence if you can. But even John Z said a nil nil was on the fence, but everyone else has gone for a Bournemouth just nicking it. So you know what? We're gonna go with what Tiggs initially said and we'll go for a cheeky one niller. Let's yeah. go for one niller. All right, one niller. Right, who else have we got in the playoff mix then? Uh we've got uh Barnsley who are away at Huddersfield Town. Uh Tom, goes one to you. Oh, that's a bit of a, a local derby, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah, they're both Yorkshire, aren't they? Um, did I, Huddersfield, I, they weren't that bad against us. I don't know. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Huddersfield nicked something, actually. But, yeah. yeah I well, in, I, their, in their last match, I think they won away at the city ground against Nottingham Forest. Which, did, um, right. you know, which is a very, very... And, you know, let's be fair, They, you know, before their 7-0 humbling over Norwich mm. they drew with Brentford at home so they're not you know they're not walkovers no I mean I'll I think you know we've uh, uh, similar to, to Bournemouth at Millwall I think it'll be be similar so I'll, I'll let Barnsley nick it I think I'll go 2-1 though I think there'll be some goals and a bit more goals there. I'll go 2-1 Barnsley I think um, yeah. but yeah, yeah I think it, that's quite a similar game to us in my opinion away at Huddersfield away at Millwall um yeah, but I think you're making it really difficult because if you remember when we done it before, we said we'd lose to Blackburn, we'd lose to Norwich, and it worked out quite well being pessimistic. So yeah. now I'm thinking, well, we need to be pessimistic. But oh, I don't know. Well, I don't know okay. Do, uh, no, well, you know what? We'll stick with the two-one. Our promotion yeah. rivals are going to be, you know, looking to you know to win. And look, let's be fair. I think a lot of Tykes fans would be disappointed if they got anything less 
than a win at uh, the John Smith Stadium. So, Jeff, I'll come to you. The Biscuit Men, will they crumble at the Hatters? I think they're crumbling already. I think they're they're a bit like a, a soggy rich tea, rich tea biscuit that's been in the tea far too long, and they're gonna they're gonna just fall apart tomorrow. Luton to win two 0 I mean, okay, yeah, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough, yeah, two 0 to uh, Luton, and that's that's absolutely fair. Right, we'll go on to match week forty four. Then three games to go, and this one, this is a, a twelve thirty kickoff. It says. 1.30, yeah, because this is a European website, so ignore that. It's 12.30, live on Sky, home against Brentford, Tiggs. Well, actually, you know, we'll let the people have the say, but, you know, let's have a let's have a discussion about this. Um, mm. Brentford at home, Tiggs, start with you. Well, this is interesting because if if what Jeff has said in the Luton Renner game comes true, I think no, we've got we it. could well be – we've got it, we've got playoffs. If we win so, and Reading lose tomorrow, we've got it. Anyway. Yeah, we've got so it. So that would be it. That, would, that be would be it. So now it's a case of where we would be in the playoffs. Yes. Now we've got Brentford and us. You're both in the playoffs. Yeah. Who wants it more? Who's going to risk their players? It's an interesting thing. This is gets 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 a little bit tasty now. Do you <laughs> because... remember in the World Cup where we, you know, we uh, there was one easy route for Southgate and we took it and we yeah. backed our way to the semi-finals and then we got found out. <laughs> but you know, it could have been a harder route and we might not have even got past the second round. Do you think that will enter Woodgate's mind whatsoever, Tom? No, I don't think so because I think you can't really predict right, what the no. route's going to be. Yeah, yeah. You don't know who's going to come sixth, who's going to come fifth. Exactly, and yeah. if you lose to Brentford, then you move. It's just too much of a nightmare, I think. Um, I think you just want to win games because you just want to go into the playoffs, the form team. That's, that's all you want. So you just want to win all your games. I think what will be interested is, um, I think I think Neil mentioned it, which I agree with in the sense that he's not going to make too many changes. We'll get shown he ain't going to do that. He wants to keep the continuity. But I've always thought if, what we want to happen happens tomorrow night and we win and red and lose and we're in the playoffs. It will be tempting then for Woodgate because he would get, I say get pelters, but if we confirm playoffs, doesn't really matter. Then we go to Brentford or Wickham or whatever. And Dan Juma gets injured. Mm. Everyone's going to go, why didn't you save him for the playoffs? It didn't matter. And that's going to be playing on his mind. And that, because you saw it as soon as we got the win against Norwich, Dan Juma, you're off mm. because we can't, so that will be tricky. Will he make a few more? Because the worst case scenario, we're going to finish sixth. Mm. And he wants to keep, so that that will be interesting because it would be difficult. I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, envy Woodgate's position there because yeah. you don't want to make changes because you want to keep winning. <laughs> but if someone were to get injured, you think it's a nightmare. Oh, yeah. I, I literally watched the um, who did they played the other night. Arsenal um, played Fulham, and obviously Arsenal season is all on your yeah. own league. Um, Abamyang's injured. They played Lacazette out front because he's their only real striker against Fulham. Didn't matter. He got injured, done his hamstring. Now they ain't got a striker, and everyone's going, "Why didn't you rest him?" But if they had arrested him, they said, "Why are you not playing like it's?" Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't. You're damned if you do, and damned if you don't. So that will be interested if we were to secure it, say tomorrow. But um, yeah, okay. yeah, I don't think it matters too much. Though I think you just want to win. You want to go into the playoffs on form. That's the main thing, I think. It's okay. quite old school, though, isn't he? Woodgate, like it, it gives me like a. I don't know. Maybe he'd be the type of guy who would who would just play the best team because of you know football, and and that's the way he feels about it. I get that vibe off of him. I might be yeah, completely wrong, but yeah, interesting. Yeah. I think interesting. there are several things going on, Sam. I think we we're, we're gonna when we play Brentford, we're gonna have a psychological boost if we thump them. So you want to play your strongest team because it is likely that we'll come up against them. I think they're probably the most likely opponent. In the final, if you know, if we finish third, they finish fourth. Um, so we need to we need to perform well against them, destroy them psychologically if we can. I think the other thing is, you may say I'm a dreamer, but mathematically, it will still be possible to catch Watford if we win tomorrow. So just imagine if John Lennon had wrote those lyrics; it just wouldn't have worked. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this context. <laughs> It's a good point Jeff makes, though, because that's that's the point. If we lose to Brentford and then say we got them in the playoff final, they've done a double on us. Yeah. It is psychologically a little bit because, um, yeah, we've, we've done quite well, haven't we, against teams around us. But Brentford were the ones, obviously, we've only played them once, who beat us. I actually thought we played all right in that game, weirdly. But, yeah, you don't want to, yeah, if you end up, like Jeff said, if you end up getting Brentford in a playoff final and they've done a double on you, it is up there a little bit. So, um, And I agree with what Tig said. I think Woodgate's more of the type of manager. You saw with Tyndall, he tried to rotate. He might mm. change if he got his go again, I'm sure. 
But yeah. um, Woodgate, I feel like, is the type of manager that would go, it's only four games anyway. I don't, you're not getting rested. You can do it. Just see it through. You know what I mean? Keep winning. I do feel yeah. like he's a bit more like that. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, firstly, before we do the the actual score then and enter into the system. Thank you so much. The first time we've had a super chat from an opposition fan. I came here from WDA, yeah. uh, WDA team, but love the content. John Z, thanks very much. And thank speak- Gosling for that. Yeah, thank yeah. Gosling for that. Um, we speak to Jacob Colshaw quite a bit, don't we? And he does a tremendous job with that channel covering Watford. Yeah. Done a really cracking job this season. And you know what? Credit to you for that win tonight. Thoroughly deserved. Tom said if you just turned um, up to this channel today, that, you know, Dan Gosling will score crucial goals. And tonight he delivered. And fair play, it looks like you're going to be going up automatically. We we thought we might have a chance if Norwich got the points. They didn't. And anyway, w- we we may see what we uh, predict for your game very shortly. I'll tell you what, Sam, I was just, yeah. just to say, we've been talking about the pandemic, the Super League, our mental effort for this. Now us and Watford are like mates. Oh, yeah. What is going on? What that's got to be the worst thing, isn't it? What is yeah. going on? Can't believe it. Anyway, you're not going to be champions. Never will be. No, oh, I, like, <laughs> I, like, I love it. Right. So, Bournemouth v Brentford. Then, um, on the whole, we've got um a couple of draws, but we've got also three nils. Kirk's going for a one all. There's a there's a nil nil there. What else have we got? We got a two one. We've got a two one three nil. How are we going to call this then? We need to we need to crack on. 3-0 for me. I always go with Jeff Smith's 3-0. Oh, oh, God. No, you know what? I'm going 2-0. I'm standing up <laughs> against it. 2-0. 2-0. <laughs> we'll get the points. We'll get the points. Right, Barnsley v Rotherham then. That's another local derby, isn't it, Tom? Yeah. Um, Rotherham, quite a scrappy saga. They're, they're, they've had a nightmare, haven't they, of all the games they've had to... Because they had so many cancellations. They've had a game like every other day. They haven't done very well. I think they lost to Birmingham in a massive one the other day. I think they're probably going to go. I think Barnsley will have too much for him. I'll go 2 0 Barnsley if I had to put it that one. 2 0 to Barnsley. Okay. No worries at all. I'll put that in the system. Who else have we got then? Watford then. They're home against Mill, the team that we play tomorrow at home, though. You've got to think, you know, this is the game that will confirm it for them. They're going to be, they're going to be winning it, surely. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll win 1 0. 1 0. All right. We'll wipe that 3 0 Millwall. Oh. No, three, three, no, Will. Um, <laughs> Norwich City, are they going to turn a corner or are they going to... I mean, because they have to win this now for uh, for winning the title. But you know what? Maybe Watford could pip them to it. I don't know. Chicks? Yeah, it feels like they're, they're kind of cruising. I don't know. I watched a bit of the game today, like Tom, and they they were nothing like the team that first 15 minutes we played against that Norwich. It's completely different. Uh, and Watford really had their number. But Queen's Park Rangers, with all due respect, are a different kettle of fish to, to Watford and and the quality of that we were able to put out on the pitch against 10 men. So I think Norwich will get the, the win here and, and secure the title. So what one we nil. go for? One nil. All right, no one worries. Nil. And then um, two playoff, uh, well, okay, one, Swansea playing Reading. Um, let's just put the Reading result in there anyway. What do we think, guys? I think I'm a draw. Yeah, I think a draw. One yeah. all. One all. Okay, one all. We'll go for that. Right, I think we've covered everyone in the playoffs there. Right, penultimate match week then. And uh, this is another match between two promotion rivals. You know, Watford probably will have it in the bank. I mean, they would have probably confirmed second by then. So they're playing Brentford, who are still vying for points. Tricky one for them. What do you think, Tom? it will be a weird one, because I think Watford, by this point, like you say, will have top two done. They're up. And Brentford will know they're in the playoffs, I would have thought. So... But Brentford will, will want to be ticking along a bit more because obviously they'll have playoffs to, to compete with. So I actually think the home of... I think Brentford might nick it, actually. I think it would just mean more to them. It would, And I think, yeah, it would just they'll just have that edge. A bit like what we saw against Norwich. It meant more to us than it did, did Norwich. So, yeah, I, I think they'll nick it. One nil's fine. Yeah, I, I do think Brentford will nick that. Tiggs, uh, Reading, are they going to do what Bournemouth and Watford did and get three points at Carrow Road or... Probably not. I can't imagine Norwich win- are losing three in a row on their own turf. No, I can't imagine that either, Sam. I think this is going to be a more convincing win for Norwich. I think Reading will see the writings on the wall and they won't be able to make the playoffs and their season will be over. So I think it's going to be a Norwich 3-0 win. 3-0. And uh, Barnsley, Tykes are at the Lily Whites, Jeff. 
Yeah, I think Barnsley will nick that. Um, Preston are doing okay. You know, they sort of have good games against promoted sides and then have a terrible game the next one. So I think this will be one of their poorer affairs. They've got nothing left to play for. I think a 2-1 win for Barnsley. 2-1, Barnsley. Right, Tiggs will come to you. Swansea at home against Derby County. Uh, I think Swansea will get that. Uh, but they won't because they never score many, do they? And Jeff's going to giggle now, but it's going to be a one nil, I think, to Swansea. A one nil. And let's, <laughs> let's see what people are saying for Wickham. But Tom, talk to me about Wickham Wanderers because there's still a chance for them. But I mean, they're just they're stretching it out, aren't they? At some yeah, point, I was going to be I, in the coffin. Yeah, I'd be surprised if there's still a chance for them when we play them. To be honest, um, just looking at it now, yeah, they're, they're, there's no way. The nine points off safety, I can't see it. I think they've they've been one of them teams. We saw it in the goal. I was fortunate enough to go to that one. That was one of the ones one that fans could go. Yeah. And they're really scrappy and they work. They just haven't quite got enough quality on the pitch. And yeah, it was a horrible game actually. But yeah, yeah I, I think they will be a bit downbeat. I think they'll be relegated. I, th I think we'll win it quite comfortably. I think it's one of them games. I think it'll either be really frustrating and we'll just have too much like it was when we played them at home. Yeah. But if we get a goal in, say, the first half, I think we can end up getting a few. I'd probably say about 3-0, actually. I don't, yeah. I don't think they're that good. You know what? A lot of people in chat saying exactly the same thing. 3-0... Chris Hubble's going for a 5 0 I mean, not one person has said that it would be any different. Kirk's going for a 2 0 Keith Thomas a 3 0 Harry a 4 0 I think, yeah, we'll go with what you said. So what was it? Was it 2 or 3? Uh, 3, I'll go for. Yeah, 3. Lovely. I think he's got to get a hat-trick at some point, hasn't he? Yeah, that's right. You never know. He's still on for 20, but mm, probably unlikely. Yeah. And right, last day of the season then, what we're going to do, we're only doing the top seven and then we'll calculate the table, see where Bob will finish, and we'll talk you through the playoffs. So he's in final, and talk you through the beach parade as well. Um, right, um, AFC Bournemouth, Stoke City, get your predictions in chat. For AFC Bournemouth v Stoke, make sure you put Stoke um, in, in there, so we know you're talking about that and not the previous one against Wickham. But Tiggs, uh, Brentford, they're against Bristol City, a team who started off like you know, looking like they might actually compete for the playoffs, but died off pretty damn quickly, I've got to say. Yeah, it did, didn't it? I, I thought they were shoe-ins for it for a long time. They look really good. Um, but I think Brentford will win this, but I think Ivan Tony will get injured at the same time as well. So it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. so uh, I think Brentford are going to win it 2-0. Well, 2-1. I'll go with that. I just predicted. No, you know what? I'm going to go with what you say. Uh, right, uh, Barnsley against Norwich then. Uh, Tom? Barnsley, Norwich. Oh, that'll be an interesting one. Um, it really will be. Yeah, it will be quite interesting. I, I think, again, I think Barnsley will, would have got the playoffs by then. Norwich are obviously, I would have thought, won the league by then. Um, I still think Norwich, even, yeah, I still think they'll be too good for Barnsley. You know? I think Barnsley might rest a few as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go 2 1 Norwich. 2 1 Norwich. Okay, Jeff, I'll come to you for Reading against Huddersfield. I mean, Reading have surely got to win once until from now until the end of the season, right? Oh, do they have to? Okay, just let, just let him have it. Okay, two one to Reading. Go on then. You've two you've one to um, Watford v Swansea. I mean, mm. you know, it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, when there are two games to go or whatever, these places might already be decided, yeah. and they might just be deciding to rest some people. I don't know because positions in the playoffs. I don't really think it matters. But Tiggs, what what do you think about that one? Yeah, I mean, we're pretty certain now. I've <laughs> Definitely, the Watford have got second, haven't they? And there's no way that, even with results going in their favour, Swansea was going to catch them. Um, so, going into the playoffs, oh, well, they're not, neither have got anything to play for, really, have they? At this point, oh, probably. A a draw. Yeah, a draw. I reckon. I think it might be a draw. I think it might be see see some squad players. Mm. I was going to say, Sam. I don't know if you can before because there's only. Two minutes left of that Swansea QPR game where we gave him the benefit of the doubt. It's still yeah. nil-nil. Oh, okay. So I don't we, want to tempt fate, but do we go back and make it nil-nil? And then they go and make a goal and we look stupid. I don't know. I think you may be right. Uh, so, yeah, should we do that? Yeah. yeah. Should yeah, we do that? that? So, at the moment, it's nil-nil. So, yeah. yeah, let's you know, let's do that. Um, I think we got everyone else's scores in. Did we have it right? Okay, so what I'm going to do... We've got to do I, Bournemouth. We've got to do Bournemouth against Stoke. Bournemouth Stoke. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course we do. That's the big one. Right. What's people if we win this, we've won 10 in a row, haven't we? Yeah, that's that's the weird thing, that's isn't it? The that's thing. the thing that's hard to get my head around. Should we I like think, a draw in there? 
I think a draw because I think we're going to well, this if I know we said about Woodgate playing his best team, but you know with what a fortnight is it a fortnight to the the first game? Yeah, I'm not sure. Something like it's less. Maybe it's less than two weeks to the first playoff game. All he's right. he's going to want to rest some. Do you think we should maybe switch it? Because everyone in chat is saying that Bournemouth going to win this. Do you think we should like maybe switch it and say that we'll only get a point tomorrow against Millwall and then we'll beat Stoke on the final day? Not that it matters anyway. I was going to say more. No, it's up to you. I'll see what everyone else thinks. I was going to say more. Do we switch the Brentford game and say that we draw with Brentford? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do that then. Let's do that. Okay. So we're still beating Millwall uh, and we're going to beat Stoke. So what are we going for? A 2 0? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Two Miller. All right, no worries at all. And then at the weekend, we'll draw with Brentford. Like we'll do a one aller, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. What we're going to do then? We're going to calculate the table. I'm going to just oh. take it off screen and check that all is good and make sure each of these teams have played 46. Uh, no, we've missed out a Brentford game. As someone said on chat, actually. Yeah. So in the meantime, whilst Brentford we're working, Rotherham we missed out. Yeah, Brentford mm -hmm. Rotherham. Oh, they'll um, win that. Brentford will win that. Yeah, let me just, I mean, like, you know, based on, um, you know, our results so far, where do you think Bournemouth are going to be finishing so far? I think we finish third if we play like that and get those results. Yeah, yeah I think we're third. Third. Mm. third. And then I'm trying to work out if Barnes, it'll either be Barnsley or, or Swansea maybe even. And six. I'd love, sure. love it to get Swansea, I think, over two legs. I think that would be perfect for us. Right, so what we've done then, we've added a Brentford win over Rotherham, okay? And we're, I've now got the league table in front of me. Now, bearing in mind, we only predicted the top seven teams' results. So any team under eighth, they'll have like 43, 44 games, depending on whether they played us or not. So here's the league table then, guys. I'm not going to do a big reveal like last time, but there we go. Bournemouth oh, in, oh. in fourth. Brentford in third. Congratulations to Watford. Uh, Norwich just missed out on 100 points by one point according to our predictions but Watford were four points clear of Brentford in third Bournemouth in fourth Swansea in fifth Barnsley in sixth so let's play devil's advocate Tom mm. Bournemouth versus Swansea over two legs based on how we played against them both home and away you'd have to think we'd win that right I think um like I said, I, I'm not too bothered about who we get. I feel like we can beat anyone on our day and we can also lose to anyone on an off day. But if I had to say who do I want, it would be Swansea over two legs. I do want Swansea over two legs. They're not that free scoring. Um, Barnsley, are just, Barnsley and Brentford just got a bit more about them, I think, over two legs. Yeah. So, yeah, I would I would take that. It's blooming interesting. We've finished 13 points clear of Reading. It's amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah, Barnsley v Brentford. I mean, that you know, it'll be intriguing to watch the other game. I've got to say, and oh, oh, oh. QPR, QPR. What? I think Swansea have just conceded in stoppage time. You're no. joking. It's just flashing You're up now. Absolutely joking, really. So we didn't give them the three points. They're not even going to get one at this, right? Yeah, QPR have just scored ninetieth minute. No. Unbelievable, unbelievable, yeah. Tom. I love it. I love it. So, there we go. Um, we'll, we'll have a point less. I mean, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't I think, think anything, exactly. will I mean, like, it doesn't really affect them, does it? To be honest, but I mean, what I'll do is I'll just re uh, recalculate that table and I'll display it on screen. So, yeah, all it is is Swansea will be a point less, uh, and still be in fifth, but there we go. Yeah, you know, you're reading nine point nine points below Barnsley, got to say. Um, intriguing games ahead and the playoffs. Hopefully there'll be fans there. It should be interesting. Um, but tomorrow we get, we could actually get it confirmed, guys. So what we're going to do before we talk about tomorrow's game, uh, we've got three minutes or so of rival fan opinion from Millwall fan Henry Morgan. I think that's uh, Henry Morgan here from the No One Likes Us Talking podcast. A um, few things to say about Millwall. Uh, coming into the game, what's our form like? Um, it was good. It was good. We were we were unbeaten in 17 until we played Swansea a couple of weeks ago. Lost 3-0 at the Den. Um, with Was it a 3-0 game? Probably not, actually. Um, so, But just yesterday, got a 0-0 draw with Brentford, set up to very much just kind of counteract their free-passing Ivan Tony getting the ball and score loads of goals sort of style. So Gary Rowett did quite well there. Um, 
doing better away from home than we are at the den though. So I think if you look at the, 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 the table, the form table in terms of like home and away stuff, um, we're definitely we're definitely better away from home. So coming to the den, Swansea beat is 3-0. Bournemouth probably would fancy their chances of getting some kind of result down there, um, especially without fans. It's not it's not really the same place. Um, um, yeah, and uh, I'd, I'd, players in form, it's another hard one. We certainly haven't got any goal scorers in form. Uh, and, you know, I think that when we do score, it's going to come from someone like Jed Wallace, someone like Mason Bennett. Maybe even someone like Scott Malone from one of our left backs or from midfield. Um, we haven't really had any particularly decent strikers or, or anyone to, to write home about up front this season. Most of our goals coming from Jed Wallace from the penalty spot, free kicks uh, all over the park. Big news for us really at the back is we've got Sean Hutchinson out. So we did very well yesterday to keep Brentford at bay. Um, Bart Bilikowski, our goalkeeper, has one of been in form all season. has got something like 17 or 18 clean sheets now so um can be difficult to get the ball past him uh but you know i mean if you if, if Bournemouth do score earlier on i think i think we'd, we we'd be in a bit of bit of trouble we we talked about this game in our podcast i mean we've really got nothing to play for now to be honest we can't go up we can't go down i think we're 12 or 13 points off the playoffs we we, we can't get relegated mathematically because derby have, have got a point the other week so so that um they they can't now catch us um, so, you know, I, I don't really know what kind of a game it's going to be. And it's, it's been such a difficult season for us to predict that we just have, have been up and down and sometimes have looked like a team that could easily be in the top four and other teams look like a team that could easily be in the bottom four. So it could be anything. No no doubt in my mind that Bournemouth have got, obviously got more quality, better quality players. I think have got one of the best squads in the league. So um, if you play to your full potential, you should potentially beat us. Um, but it's, you know, again, it's the championship and it's an up and down middle side. We've got, we have got game winners amongst us and, and our defence can be difficult to break down at times. So look forward to the game and uh, I'll go for a 1-0 Millwall victory. Come on, you Lions. Come on, you Lions. There we go. That, that was Henry Morgan there from the No One Likes Us Talking podcast. Follow him on Twitter N U N O L U talking without a G, and uh, yeah, you can see what they are all about. Uh, great pod, got to say. Um, so bring the team back in. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a tricky one, Tom. Right? Yeah, it will be tough. Um, I think, like I said, I think they're just a just a hard team to play against um, without being being brilliant on the eye or anything like that. We've seen that when we played them before, haven't we? Um, it's easy to say, but I think we need a. We need to get an early, earliest goal. Otherwise, it could be a real, a real test in time for us. But um, yeah, they've drawn a lot of games, haven't they? And they're that type of team. I mean, you know, they they got a nil nil with Brentford. Brentford have got a bit of firepower. Obviously, you spoke about Tony, so they they've got something about them. They've got quite a few experienced players. I've unfortunately got Scott Malone as well. Who we're not too keen on. So hopefully, he don't have a good one. But um, yeah, I'd like to think we have too much. But who knows? Who knows? I think it's it's very similar. You, you heard Morgan there, very similar, kind of expecting us to have too much, but it's championship. And uh, But the form we're on, it's all about form, isn't it? It's all about trying to get into them playoffs on form. So uh, let's hope we keep play like we did the, in the last few games. I think we'll have too much. Hmm. Jeff, it's, um, it's a banana skin, though. We know that. We played them as a Premier League team in the FA Cup. But it's not the same den when it hasn't got its supporters there, as he said, is it? It's not the same. Uh, they're a similar sort of side, though, to to the the one that we played at the Vitality, and you know that was it was a tough game. We were expected to to win that one. We uh, we did go ahead, but we then sort of sat back and conceded quite late, as I remember. Um, and and it's going to be it's going to be a tough game. They're going to sit deep. I think they'll let us have plenty of the ball. The key will be whether we'll be as successful as we were against Norwich, getting in behind. And causing them problems down the flanks, and um, yeah, it's going to be down to Dan Juma and down to Brooks, I think, to have, have really good games. Um, and I'm really hoping that we we can go there and get a result. But you you just don't know. We, Millwall, horrible team to play against. Unless we do score early or, or score something magical, it could be a really hard ninety minutes. Mm. It could be Harry uh, Moggs put a comment on saying, "Been born with a, a born with supporter all my life. However, don't know what UTC IAD means." 
up the cherries in all departments there you go um and tiggs finally i mean yeah your your score prediction then for tomorrow you, you know you're feeling confident are you yeah i am i think this is this is the chance to break that hoodoo against them because that, that really disappointed me earlier in the season and if i'm not mistaken because that result tonight if we win we could well be third as a result so yeah. um you know if, if there ever was an incentive come on boys do it yeah very very interesting i've got to say get your uh, predictions in we put a few on screen already and yeah if we win and reading lose and let's be fair they're more likely to lose than win these days it will ensure a playoff place that is pretty good going considering Tom, it wasn't so long ago. We all just thought it wasn't it wasn't going to happen, and we've we've paid credit to him on the podcast. He seems to be the person who speaks on behalf of the fans. You saw what his opinions were on the Super League today. He was very blunt. He was direct, but the fans have been retweeting him, have been loving him. Um, we've got a man who the fans like, and we've never been there to watch his team play. So, you know, come what may, what do you? Th I mean. Are you hoping he's going to be there in the hot seat next season or what? I think what he's what he's done really well is obviously we've all said we we were never against Woodgate at all. Um, wasn't hit anything to do with him, was it? It was all the process and stuff like that. But um, what he's done really well, I never thought would be the case that if we don't go up, I still feel like there will be a large portion of the fan base that would say give him a season <clears throat> in the championship. I, I think there would be. And I never would have I said that uh, when we appointed him, I would have thought, well, if we don't go up, he's not going to get the job. It'll just go at the end of the season. Now I'm starting to think, I think a few, quite a few Bournemouth fans, maybe even the majority, would actually say I would be quite happy for him to have a full season. Because, you know, let's be honest, he's coming at a very difficult time. You know, they're not his players. So, yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't be against that. But hopefully we don't have to talk about that anyway and, and he gets the job done. But yeah, he's he's come across really likeable, like you say. He's very he's very good at engaging with the fans without ever having to have seen him in a stadium. So, um, yeah, really like what, I'm doing, what he's doing. <laughs> I really like what you're doing as well, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My only concern is that we've said a few times that, you know, like you say, where we've been really up and then really down because of the results. And um, I'm just I'm thinking, ten, can we do 10 wins in a row? Because... I, I remember saying at one point that I feel like we'll be really rubbish for a bit and then we'll be really good and we'll all be saying, oh, look, these players are amazing. And then we'll go, oh, they're rubbish again. Mm. And I just hope that before the end of the season, there's still four games that we don't have a little another couple of what are they doing again. Because it wasn't long ago. Six games is, is bloody brilliant. But it wasn't, you know, two in a week most of the time. It wasn't that long ago that we go, these players are useless. So I just hope we can just... Keep it going for a little bit longer, lads. Yeah, a little um, bit. Because we know what they've got in them. And, but yeah, credit to Woodgate what he's done. Six, six wins in a row. Can't miss left that at all. Can't be. Right. Closing comments, guys. We'll finish it there. But anything more to say? Just, you know, like up the cherries and, you know, we should be winning, Jeff. We should be winning. Um, if we get to, um, I think it's nine wins on the bounce. It's a club record, consecutive league wins, which would be nice. So but, uh, I think ultimately we all want uh, promotion. Um, we all want to enjoy the football and we've been very fortunate the last six games they've been putting it in and getting great results so more of the same and Woodgate why not give them a chance Woodgate's at the wheel Tej thanks very much thank you mate I didn't call you John this time pretty good of me yeah not bad at all but speak, yeah speaking of John Woodgate's, Woodgate's the man at the moment I agree with Jeff um, give him a chance and uh, especially if Joe Pasquale is still not available <laughs> yeah yeah Jeff cheers mate Cheers. Thank you. And Tiggs, thank you as ever, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. Enjoyed it muchly. Excellent. Hey, thank you to everyone in chat. Really appreciate it. Tom, do you fancy doing a watch along tomorrow? Yeah, why not? 5.45. You going to be there? Yeah, I'll be there, mate. Why not? See if I can put a performance like Jeff did at the weekend. We've uh, got a good record in the league, so let's keep it going. 100% record on the line. 100% win record when produced by Back of the Net. Let's put that little asterisk in there. <laughs> and the 8 o'clock free-for-all is there for you as well to take part so we'll see you then anyway thanks for watching happy tuesday hopefully it'll be a happy wednesday